and you give Christ. Praise the Lord. Now that God through Jesus Christ has restored me in the right mind, the human my prayer can listen to you, the voice of the last thoughts of God. I can now write you again and rejoice in the God of my salvation. You better stare at overcomeentry.org. In hearing your program tonight, I wanted to add, you seem to be uncertain about John Boulder. I know you're talking about David. I never even mentioned John Boner. I haven't even discussed that. Oh, well. He says I might have missed your point. I pray the archive sometimes to clarify it. Meantime, there is someone else that be with him, so-and-so, that Boner is actually a Jesuit. He could be. I've made no inquiries about him at all. And I have made no comment about him. I guess he's somebody that's, uh, I'll be told by Mr. Obama to do something. Why, why would he choose a man who, uh, all the people that are running our government are involved in the Jesuit or the Masonic order or Luciferian some way or another. That's the only way they could have that kind of power. The power given to them by the God of this world. Dear Brother Stair, it's been a while since I made contact with you. I'm still listening daily to the broadcast, even as we are confronted more and more by the aggression of the world. We know God can provide a table in the wilderness, but can we maintain our integrity when he does, when he holds back? Can we still say, I know that my Redeemer lives and will stand in the latter day on the earth? Can we believe he's doing right when everything around us is going wrong. If we ever needed God before, be sure you need him now. These, these are the words of a 17-year-old girl. Her spiritual insight has often amazed me. God bless you, sister. I'm praying by the for healing and restoration for you and all the saints worldwide. Please pray for me that I have wisdom as I face the future and seek proper relations with my family and friends. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. Brother Stair at OvercomeMinistry.org. In listening to all the gun control talks, it reminds me of Daniel chapter 11, verse 24. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. Obama is toting gun control, Brother Stair, under the guise of peace and safety to protect the people. Obtaining the kingdom with flattery while riding his white horse. And when they cry peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as a woman in travail. Yes, my friend, you are so right about that. We are on the verge of that sudden destruction by travail. Even though we are in the birth pain, we don't realize that the delivery is very near. The one in Trudeau, brother, it caught my attention. I just checked the stuff that wouldn't be the same each day. It's about 250 to 300,000 or 130 million a year. With a population of 7 billion miles, half of it are women. And if that way of serving children, population explosion, as you think, it would take about 27 years for every woman in the world to give birth at least once. That's amazing. Your daughter will be 27 years old this year. Surely a marker of the time of a woman in travail as we close out this generation. One more thing. It seems like th there are those that still question what you have said about a generation, about your birth being the start of it. Well, here is a scripture. Now, before I go any further and read that, there has been much discussion over this 70-year period that I said was marked in 1947 or 48. And it was. I also said at that time that that was the beginning of the generation. Well, uh, how can you look at it? If it was marked, then it means that that generation was marked as the last generation. And then the question of when did it begin? Well, it, uh, we have come to realize that at my birth, 1933, could very well have been the time of that generation. 
And if that is the case, then we've already gone past the 70 years, and I am now working on the 10-year bar of time. Now, I don't know how many of you will understand that, and I'm sure that many of you will twist it around trying to figure this out. How important is it for you to understand that this is the last generation and that my ministry, my birth, my life, is going to cover the entire last generation? fulfills the word. He has spoken to you, brothers, and balances the whole thing out. Glory to God in the highest. They have Moses and the prophets. If they don't believe them, neither would they believe for one rose from the dead. If you can't believe nothing else about this prophet, will you believe that this is the last generation and the last time and it is about to come to an end? And Jesus is the end, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world as a witness unto every nation, and then shall the end come. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world, this day is this scripture being fulfilled in your ear. Chapter 2. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for the Lord, to be testified in these times. I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. I teach not the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good work. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the men, but to be in silence. For Adam was first born, then he. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived within the transgression. Notwithstanding, they shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with the right.
the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And then to them had given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. And it was commanded them that they should not curse the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. In those days, when men seek death, shall not find it, and shall desire to die, shall flee from it. And the things of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of men, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplate as it were breastplate of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. And Satan took Jesus up into a high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, You bow down, and you worship me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. This angel of the bottomless pit is not even Lucifer, the fallen angel. Give us a message parallel. Today, he is raging fury upon the face of the earth according to Revelation 12 and verse 12 lo we are to the inhabitants of the earth for Satan has come down onto you having great wrath come down from where where has he been the Bible says that he is a prince of the power of the air. His throne is in the first heavens. And he controls the heavens and the earth. He has been given to by man. When man sinned, God gave man, you know, dominion over the earth. That men, by worshiping, acknowledging, and serving Lucifer, put the dominion of the things in this world under his control. And so you're watching Satan set up his kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of sin, the kingdom of evil and wickedness. It's covering the whole world. And that's the truth. In the book of Daniel, there's a unique scenario about the day in which we live. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel said that he had a vision or a dream upon his bed. He wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter or set forth the whole matter. He said, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of heaven and behold the four winds of the heaven scroll upon the great sea. Now, the word sea in Revelation always applies to a, a great multitude of people, a sea of people, many of them. And he said, and the four beasts came up from the sea. These beasts, the word beast means government. The four beasts spoken about in the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel has to be taking control of the known world of their day. In the last days, we are spoken of 
a fourth beast which is diverse than all the others. Here in this particular chapter, Daniel 7 and 3, it says, and four great beasts, four great governments came up from the sea, from out of the people. They claim that they are the people's governments. You know, like China and the Soviet Union and the United States and now the New World Order. The fourth beast, the United Kingdom, Canada. These are all governments now you know that represent the people. Yes, sir. 